you, gentlemen. Unity Baptist Church this morning. We're glad you're all here, and what a great morning it's already been, and uh, let's stand together as we sing. If you hadn't noticed this month, we're reviewing some of the choruses that we've uh, been singing over the last several months, and next week we'll start with a new chorus, but today we'll sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing mercies of the Lord. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. With my mouth will I make known Thy faithfulness to all generations I will sing of the mercies of the Lord Forever I will sing of, of the Lord 
sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing mercies of the Lord. Sorry about that. I have my mind went on autopilot. I was thinking about things coming up, and I just zoned out. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all on me this morning. So anyway, as the men come forward for the morning offering, I'll ask uh, Brother Johnny Pyatt to open us uh, for a word of prayer and uh, pray for the offering this morning. Amen. You may be still. Stand again as we sing Onward Christian Soldiers this morning, an old favorite. Onward Christian Soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ the royal master leads against the foe forward into battle see his banner go onward Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before like a mighty army moves the church of god brothers we are treading where the saints have trod we are not divided all one body we one in hope and doctrine, one in charity. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before. Crowns and thorns may perish. Kingdoms rise and wane, but the church of Jesus constant will remain. Gates of hell can never against that church prevail. We have Christ's own promise, and that cannot fail. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before. Onward, then, ye people, join our happy throng. Blend with our your voices with the triumph song. Glory, Lord, and honor unto Christ the King. This through 
countless ages men and angels sing under Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before thank you you may be seated boy that's a Ah, just feels victorious this morning, and um, we've already had some victories this morning. Janet, you want to share? The, the Lord worked this morning, and my friend Michelle Rouse accepted Christ as her Savior in Sunday school this morning. Amen. Amen. We've been praying for her for some time, and what a blessing it is she comes to know Christ. So that song of victory we just sang has... Such a deep meaning, because now it's uh, we have another soul that will be with us in eternity in heaven. What a blessing that is. What a, an amazing thing that is. Um, so uh, let's remember the announcements for the week. Um, so Monday night, the ladies' outreach will be meeting at 6.30 uh, tomorrow evening. We invite all the ladies out for that. Um, I don't know, again, I don't know exactly what goes on there, but I know they always come back happy and uh, full, and they have good food and fellowship. It's just a wonderful time. We invite each and every lady to come out for that. Men, we're not invited. We're just not invited, men, so don't put that on your calendars, but ladies, please put it on yours. Uh, for sure. Uh, then I want to remind you again of Wednesday uh, evening service, um, 7 o'clock p.m. as we're working to wrap up uh, uh, the book of Romans. Um, now, we got a couple birthdays this week. First is Mike Riddles on Friday. So we'll ask Mike to stand up. We just embarrassed you a couple weeks ago with your anniversary. Hold on. We also got Chris, uh, Crystal McNeely. Uh, uh, also, so please stand up. We didn't want to forget you this week for certain. So let's sing happy birthday to these two folks. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. We hope you have both have wonderful birthdays this week. And uh, right now, I want, I'd like uh, uh, Marissa uh, Snyder to come up and share uh, an announcement with, her, with us. Good morning. Just wanted to take a few minutes. Thank you for giving me a few minutes. Uh, talk about Operation Christmas Child. Um, one, I want to thank everybody already that has already reached out to me, wanting to get involved, and already bringing things in. It's, uh, I'm really excited about what we're going to be able to do through the church uh, for that program. Um, so there are empty boxes out there. If you like to fill a box, empty box on the left side of the table. There is a bin um, to the right if you want to bring things in. Either way, whatever is easier for you however you would like to get involved we will have uh probably later in october towards the end of the month uh depending how much we have to pack up uh we'll have like a packing party um just getting all the boxes ready of what uh filling with all the things that we have uh so we'll once we have a definite date on that we'll announce that have it in the bulletin if anybody would like to come help with that um there are labels, we got the labels in uh, for the boxes if you decide to actually fill the boxes. Um, they do ask for uh, a $10 donation uh, per box uh, if you're gonna fill them yourself. And we're gonna be working later on trying to uh, get the money for the boxes that the church will be filling. Um, yes, it does go and cover the processing and the shipping. It also, the most important thing it does is that covers every child that gets a box will also get a booklet called The Greatest Gift. It will tell them the story of Jesus and 
um, how they can accept him, and it will be in the child's language. It's been translated into over 90 languages, and they also get an invitation to join uh, like a 12-week study uh, that will take it even further. It's called The Greatest Journey. Uh, so yeah, so the ten dollars just it doesn't just get it to him; it gets literally gets the gospel in the hands of a child. Um, there, uh, there's a lady posted a thing the other day. Just said a lot of uh, things that I wanted to say. Just some of the stories that I've been hearing. Just I, I mean, they're inspiring. They're heartbreaking. And she said it so well. I asked her if it would be okay if I would share uh, her thoughts. <laughs> because um, it, it said it well and it, it touched me. Um, so this is one of the uh, area project leaders, uh, Amy Ashbury. Uh, just like with shoebox packing time in full swing, we ask ourselves so many questions when packing boxes. Let's remember not to overthink it, but instead to pray about every box and each child who will receive one. Not sure something should go because it's in English, send it. So many children around the world learn, learn English in school and it could be a great study tool. Hesitant to send hats or gloves because they might go to a tropical country? Send them. God will send them to the right place. She read a story of a boy whose family used them for hot mats, and they still have them years later. <laughs> Not sure about soap? We're just going to leave it in the original packaging and send it. Read a story about a girl who grew up in a dump site, and the good-smelling soap was such a gift to her because all she had ever smelled was the dump. Another story told a child who shared one bar of soap with dozens of other children when they took their monthly trip to the bathhouse, and having her own bar of soap was such a treasure. Wonder if an older child would like a stuffed animal or a younger child could use crayons? They will. I remember being in an orphanage in Madagascar and the 18-year-old boys being absolutely over the moon about toy cars and stickers. Don't know if an item will be useful. You can bet a child will find a creative way to use it. Are toothbrushes the right size? Should they be left in the cover or kept in packaging? If you're a child who has shared a toothbrush with an entire family or an orphanage, do those things matter? Should we send cups, bowls, water bottles? Yes, any container for water or food is precious. I've been to places in different parts of the world and seen families search trash cans or dumps for empty water bottles. I've seen water and soda bottles reused over and over. Remember, we live in a spoiled country. American norms are not the norms for children in receiving countries. Imagine being a child who has never had a toy and has never received a gift before. It's easy to think, is that really true? Well, it is. My friend went on a distribution trip to Tanzania, and one of the things that stuck with her was when one of the leaders there said, you call it a simple gift, but to, to them, this is extravagant. So pack whatever you feel led to pack and pray that God will direct every box to exactly the right child. Every box will be prayed over multiple times. It will be prayed over before it leaves this church, prayed over multiple times at the processing center. And I mean, even I thought about things like, you know, the box sizes, it's like there's ages two to four, five to nine, 10 to four, 10. Like there's a big difference in those sizes just within each category. Uh, but it's not for us to be concerned about. It's, it's, it's gonna be prayed on. God will get exactly the right place. I trust him to guide every step of my life and to guide my, de my decisions. He can certainly guide the shoe boxes that we're sending out. All right. If anybody has any questions, anything else, um, just get with me. I'll be glad to. Thank you. Well, well said. I couldn't help but think she was talking about the, the soap when I was a, a kid. I'm, you know, my mom would have to tell me especially that on, on Saturdays I had to take a bath on Saturday night. It's like, uh, you know, and she'd always inspect behind the ears and, and the whole thing, you know. Uh, but imagine doing that if you didn't even have a bar of soap. I mean, what a, uh, what a blessing we can be. Um, I love this uh, Operation Christmas Child. I think it's just a, a wonderful ministry and in such a small way, we can impact so many. So I, I echo what Marissa said. I encourage you, that please participate in that. You never know the difference you'll make in a child's life. And you may even be impacting them for eternity 
through the books and the uh, literature and things I get. Um, and we may not know that this side of heaven, but what a difference you can have and what a difference you can make. It's something very practical, but there's so many children around the world that just don't have uh, anything for Christmas. And what a, a way to open a door to talk about Christ is when we give at Christmas. Uh, amazing. Uh, other announcements, uh, not this week, but the next week uh, from October 3rd through the 5th, we'll be having a fall revival with Brother Leonard Fletcher, uh, who will be uh, preaching. Services will be uh, start at 7 p.m. each night, and everyone is welcome. We encourage you to come out and join us. Uh, Wednesday, October 12th, we'll start a new program here at church. It'll be Trail Life uh, for... Um, boys from what is it from is it four years old up or five years old up uh, uh, you remember five and up there you go uh five years old and up we will have programs for for boys there trail life is kind of the uh, christian version of the boy scouts of america uh, if you're not familiar with it it is a wonderful program excellently done um, now, there will also be youth classes for the girls and any of the boys that, that uh, don't want to participate in trail life. Uh, we do have other programs in place for them. So we encourage you to come out. And again, if there's youth in your neighborhood, encourage them to come out. Bring them out and, uh, so that they can participate in trail life as well. Uh, we'll have friends and family Sunday with a covered dish dinner following the service on October 23rd. So we encourage you to come out and, um, you know, kind of show out for the, for that, uh, invite neighbors, invite friends, invite family. Maybe you have family members that haven't been to church in a real long time. Hey, we're having friends and family, uh, service at church this week. Will you come? Um, and, and guess what? I'll even feed you afterwards. I mean, what a great way to do that. And, and if you haven't had the cooking of the ladies in this church recently, you have missed it because they certainly do know how to cook and I certainly know how to eat. So that's a good thing. Uh, it, it is a, a wonderful, wonderful, um, thing when we have covered dish. And then on uh, Sunday, October 30th, we'll have Trunk or Treat uh, from 4 to 6 o'clock as an outreach to the community. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet for anyone who would like to participate. Um, and <clears throat> maybe you can't participate um, here during that time, but would like to participate in terms of a donation of candy. We encourage that uh, as well so that, you can, um, so that we can give that out as well. Uh, are there any announcements I may have missed? I'll also just mention that prayer requests are on the back of, the, of your bulletin. Please take that home and pray for those. We have several people there that are sick and afflicted, and uh, we just uh, want to continue to pray for them and pray specifically for them. All right, we'll now hear from the choir.
take a big breath. It takes a lot of wind out of you, but uh, it's all very good. Now let's stand up, stand up for Jesus. Again, soldiers of the cross, singing about the victory we have in him this morning. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obey. For to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day. Ye that are brave now serve him against unnumbered foes. Let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you. Ye dare not trust your own. Put on the cross full armor. Each piece put on with prayer. Where duty calls or danger, be never wanting there. Very good. We'll have the piano play through as we greet those around us this morning. So I did want to pass along an invitation again if you're not part of the choir and but would like to sing with us for our Christmas cantata, you are officially invited. We do practice on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. I know that is a horrible time to have to get up on a Sunday morning, but the fact is, is that we all appreciate it much more uh, later in the day. So we do invite you out to come join us and uh, to sing with us. Uh, we, uh, last week we listened to the cantata. This week we actually uh, sang it. So you're not missing anything. 
you're not behind, we just invite you to come out and join us. We could use the extra voices. So, uh, very good. Now, uh, I will ask, we have a blessing here in Marissa sing for us this morning. So, I'll ask her to come up and to bless us with her ministry and song. I'm so sorry y'all have to look at me again today. <laughs> Welcome to the family you can feel at home here. There's a lot of love that goes beyond these years. There's nothing like the fellowship of those who love the Lord. So welcome to the family. There's always room for more. The tablecloths are ready. The tea is sweet and cold. The lines are long for that good fried chicken and the green bean casserole. Old folks are fanning. The young kids are at play. The preacher asks the blessing. It's a scene that seems to say. Welcome to the family you can feel at home here. There's a lot of love that goes beyond these years. There's nothing like the fellowship of those who love the Lord. So welcome to the family. There's always room for more. We all feel like napping on a Sunday afternoon. But we stick around. songs are new or old. There's something in the harmony that's speaking to my soul. Welcome to the family you can feel at home here. There's a lot of love that goes beyond these years. There's nothing like the fellowship of those who love the Lord. So welcome to the family. There's always room for more. to see my brothers and sisters that mean so much to me I think about the many times they've kept me in their prayers and the countless ways they've always shown me that they care and I know they'll still walk with me no matter what ahead. Yes, so much more than just their words, their lives have always said. Welcome to the family you can feel at home here. There's a lot of love that goes beyond these years. There's nothing like the fellowship of those who love the Lord. So welcome to the family. Welcome to the family you can feel at home here. Goes beyond these years. There's nothing like the fellowship of those who love the Lord. So, welcome to the family. Oh, welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. There's always room for It's getting blown out up here. But that was good. I like that song. It's been it's been it's, it's been several years since I'd heard that song, and uh, I love that song. But uh, if you have your Bibles this morning, go with me to the book of Titus, chapter number two today. Titus, chapter number two. Um, one thing that is on your list of Operation Christmas Child, really quick. Uh, I think there's soap on that list somewhere. I don't see it on mine up here, but I think there is. Uh, we don't need any soap at this time. I have some uh in coming so um if you want to take that off the list i would appreciate it all right titus chapter number two how many of you's glad to be at church today amen amen, amen. how many of you's glad you're saved today amen. amen amen beats the alternative doesn't it our worst day as a christian is better than our best day 
as a lost person. And I'm grateful for the saving grace of God. I'm grateful for the ones that we've seen saved this year. I think that was part of our goal this year was to see some saved, see baptism. Uh, we do have baptism lined up for the first Sunday of November. Um, so keep that in mind. It, uh, that'll go in line with our uh, first Sunday of um, November will go in line with our communion, so keep that in mind as we go through this month and next month. All right, Titus chapter number 2. Titus chapter number 2, when you find your place there, say amen. 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 Verse number 11, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly, in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Let's go to the Lord in a moment of prayer. My dear gracious hey, Father, Lord, we want to thank you for the opportunity to come today into the house of into your house to worship and praise you. God, we want to thank you, God, for the soul that was already saved this morning. God, we're very grateful for that. We thank you for the prayers that we've seen answered. God, we just want to thank you for being a good God to us all. Who a people that does not deserve to have you in our lives, God, we're able to come and worship you and adore you and be able to one day spend eternity with you, and we're grateful for that. God, we pray today, God, for those that may be lost and undone without you. Lord, we pray that you would save them before it's eternally too late. We pray for those today, Lord, that are the God that are backslidden. Lord, we pray that you would reach down and touch them and draw them back to live a life that's pleasing and acceptable unto you. God, we want to Pray today, God, for those that are sick and afflicted. God, we pray that you will touch them and heal, heal them and help them if it be your will. God, we pray for those today that are brokenhearted. God, we pray that you'd mend their broken hearts. For those that came today that may be discouraged, Lord, we pray that you would encourage them. And all these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Over the last few weeks now, I think we're on week three, we have been dealing with, and I didn't really intend for this to go into a series, but it's turned into that. We've been dealing with salvation. And first week we dealt with seeking the Lord out of Isaiah chapter number 55. Last week we dealt with the grace of God in repentance. Today I want to deal with one of the last aspects, hopefully we'll see as we get ready for the next week. I want to deal this morning with the grace of God that brings salvation. I want to take my text verse this morning out of Titus chapter number 2 and verse number 11. For it says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. This week, well, the last two and a half, well, two weeks, last two weeks, I've been working in a church. And this week, I've been praying for certain people, and I've been praying that God would save them. And I've been trying to keep my mind wrapped around what's going on at our church and how God's working and how God's doing certain things. And as I begin to think about this week and begin to pray about the message for this week, I begin to ask God, God, show me the right direction where to go. I don't want to ever just preach a series just for the sake of preaching a series. Series preaching sometimes can be really easy. And you say, why is that? Because you can lay out a plan and you can say, I'm going to preach on this, this, and this, and this, and this for the next six to eight weeks. And that's easy, that can be easy at times. But I don't want to just preach a series. I want to preach the message that God would have for the church. Because a series of sermons is one thing, but having the mind and the message of God is another thing. And as I begin to look this morning at, or this week at Titus chapter number 2, I thought about how important it is about the grace of God. Francis Chan said salvation is all about the grace of God. There is absolutely nothing that you can do to save yourself or earn God's favor. As I begin to think about that, preacher, what is grace? Grace this morning is a wonderful concept. 
Grace means goodwill and loving kindness and favor. Grace is a popular de definition, is an unmerited favor. There is nothing that you and I have done to deserve the grace of God. When I think about the saving grace of God, God comes to a group of people who hates Him, who despised Him, who rejected Him, and He comes to them and says, Hey, I want to bestow my grace upon you. The Bible clearly teaches that we're saved by grace through faith. Yet some misunderstand and abuse the concept of the grace of God. The grace of God is not a license to sin without consequence. If you as a Christian today that is saved by the grace of God, it should hurt you. It should convict you. It should grieve you to sin against a holy God. This morning, if I gave you several million dollars or a million dollars, and I just came up to you and said, hey, I want to give you this money, and I don't have that much money. John Munson does, but I don't, okay? But this morning I say, if I want to give you a million dollars, just for no reason, that would be an act of grace and an act of kindness, but if you did something after I gave you that, that would hurt me or, or you, it would bother you and you would come and you may ask my forgiveness, you may not, I would forgive you either way, but you may come back to me and say, hey, I know you was nice to me, I know you get, showed me grace and favor, and I want to say I'm sorry for what I did. That should be the same aspect when it comes to salvation after we're saved. God grants us the grace of salvation when we see Sin, we should go back before God and say, God, I have sinned against you. And God, I am sorry that I've caused this hurt in you, of you and of your name. So the grace this morning is not a free will to sin. All right? Does that mean that we'll be sinless perfect? Absolutely not. But what it does mean this morning is that we are not held under the law when we do sin. When we sin, we don't have to go out and do a burnt sacrifice, right? When we sin, we don't have to go out and do all of these different things. But what we have can do and what we should do is come to God and say, God, I'm sorry I've sinned. So there's three things this morning I want to give you very quickly. Number one this morning, verse number 11. Salvation hath appeared to all men. Not one man in this world has not had the, the opportunity to see salvation. I was asked a question one Wednesday night here. Actually, uh, we was teaching on something. I can't remember what we was teaching on. They said, Preacher, what about somebody on the very back side of the world? Has salvation appeared to them? Absolutely. The Bible says even nature itself teaches that there is a what? God. Right? So therefore, if nature itself teaches that there is a God, then salvation hath appeared to all men. Number one this morning, when I think about salvation appearing to all men, salvation once was a hidden mystery to man. Say, preacher, prove it. I will. Go with me to Romans chapter number 16 this morning. Romans chapter number 16. When you find your place there, say amen. Amen. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the what? Mystery, which was what? Kept secret since when? The world began. God in his plan and in his time had a plan for salvation to appear to all men. The Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, talked about a time that he would come and he would be born into this world. Matthew talked about, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Why? For he shall save his people from their sin. All of this was a great mystery. The Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the world. For how many people? All men. And that was a mystery to those in the Old Testament. And at the beginning of the New Testament. And then we get on down into 
into Colossians chapter number 1. Go with me to Colossians chapter number 1 this morning. When you find your place in Colossians 1, say amen. amen. All right. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generation is now made manifest to who? His saints. Verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is, in, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. We see here this morning, God had a plan to be to redeem every man. The Bible says, and if you've been following along in the book of Romans, you know where this is going. The Bible says he came to his own. His own was who? The Jews. And his own received him not. So then he skipped the Jews to those that rejected him and went to the Gentiles. Not every Gentile man or woman will accept Jesus Christ. But salvation hath appeared to every man. I believe every man, every woman, every boy, every girl at some point in their life will have the opportunity to accept Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Not every man will accept Him, but not every man will reject Him. There are many called, but few are chosen. Well, do we see it was a mystery that was hidden, but we know that this is a mystery that was revealed. Christ himself, when he began to go out into the, into the world and teaching, he began to teach about the work that he was coming to do. His, his teachings continued with the apostles when he told them, I want you to go out into all the world and preach the gospel. I want you to reach out to every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. I want every nation to hear about the grace of God that hath appeared to all men. The grace of God that brings salvation is unlike Gnosticism which shrouds itself in privileged secrecy. It is the good news that God intends for everyone to hear, but not just for everyone to hear, but for everyone to heed. Jesus said, I, Jesus said, I want not just some to repent, but I call every man everywhere to repent. If he only wanted some of us to repent, then he wouldn't have died for the whole world. If he only wanted some of us to be saved, he would not have said salvation hath appeared to all men. But instead, he said, I want to save every man. Moving on this morning, salvation hath appeared to all men. What else do you see here, preacher? Verse number, uh, number two this morning. Salvation, the grace of God that brings salvation teaches us how to what? Live. Preacher, where do you get that this morning? Go with me, verse number 12 and 13. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Preacher, what do you see this morning? Number one. Salvation this morning will teach us how to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. The Holy Ghost on the inside of us will teach us how to say no. Does that make sense this morning? You know, we get, we've, we've got a group that thinks that we need to teach everybody to say no first. No. Let the Holy Ghost get a hold of a person and the Holy Ghost will teach you how to say no to ungodliness. It will teach you to say no to those things that bring a lack of reverence to God. It will teach you how to say no to wickedness in general. It will teach you to say no to approving of a crowd that hates God. It not only will teach you that to say no to that, it will teach you to deny worldly lust. It will teach you to say no to improper desires pertaining to this life. This morning it will teach you to say no to the temptation 
of adultery, fornication, idolatry. It will teach you to say no to all of the sins in this world. Now, preacher, does that mean I'm going to be sinless perfect? Absolutely not. But on the inside of you, when you do sin, the Holy Spirit's inside saying, Hey, hey, you, you, quit, quit. You know that's not right. The Holy Spirit is the one that will allow you to bite your tongue when you just want to let someone have it and give them a piece of your mind. Can I give you an example of that? Can I use my own personal self? My brother-in-law came in this week. Y'all know where this is going, don't you? Yesterday morning, I'm on my way to see my parents and my sister. I didn't go to see him, I'll just be honest, all right? Ted was teaching on that Sunday school this morning. And I didn't go to see him at all. And I get to the restaurant where we're supposed to eat. My mom gets out, and my mom's upset. And I said, what's wrong? She said, I'll tell you in a few minutes. I said, no, you're going to tell me now, because I want to know now. My brother-in-law decided that it was a good idea to yell at my mom. Well, we left one restaurant because they was too busy, and we got to another restaurant. And the fleshly side of me said, I want to jerk a knot in his tail. (laughs) The Christian side of me said, he ain't worth your time. The worldly side of me said, I want to bless him out. And that may not be the right words, all right? I want to give him a piece of my mind. I want to hem him up in a corner. And the spiritual side of me said, what good is that going to do you? We got to the restaurant yesterday morning. He gets out. Always dragging behind like he always does. You can't fix stupid. When you meet him, when he comes to church here and you meet him one Sunday or one Wednesday, you'll understand. He won't even sit through the entire service. He'll get up and walk out and go sit somewhere. All right? But anyway, he will... I was sitting there and I walked up and I said, hey. And he said, hey. And that was it. That's all I had to say. I didn't want to know how he was doing. I didn't want to know nothing else because I knew what the rest of that conversation would include. But the Holy Spirit was on the inside of me saying, hey, don't, don't lose it. He ain't worth it. He ain't worth your time. He ain't worth none of that. Ain't worth your testimony. What really bothered me was teaching us to Deny worldly lust. Let me get on to this part. He straight out lied to a preacher. I was standing there talking to another preacher. I was talking to my dad. We was having a great conversation. He walks up, has a baby in his hands. And that dude stood there. And that preacher asked him, said, well, what's this youngin's name? And he gave some off-the-wall answer that didn't even match that youngin's name. And I looked up and I said, that youngin's name ain't that. That youngin's name's Josiah. Why lie about it? Now, again, I had to bite my tongue. But the Holy Ghost, if it was on the inside of us, will teach us how to conduct ourselves. The Holy Ghost will teach us that we cannot love the things of this world and love God. The Holy Ghost will teach us That we should live soberly. That word soberly there is with a sound mind. Temperately and discreetly. To conduct ourselves in a manner that we can be without spot or blemish. Justly conformable to justice, honesty. Oh Lord, and without injuring anyone. I wasn't to that point. I was to that point yesterday, All right, This refers to the proper performance of our duties. The best way to describe it is the golden rule. Treat others as you would have them treat you. In a godly manner means according to the word of God and agreeably to the will of God. In only in all godly exercises both public and private to the glory of God. When we think about that this morning, soberly is to live with self-restraint. Mike was talking about moderation this morning. Cassidy, you'd be glad to know I broke your dad's moderation diet last night. 
We went out to McAllister's Deli. I went up there and I went to order a cookie. I said, do y'all want one? He's like, I don't know. Kathy said, yeah, we'll take one. Me and Michael split it. Mike ate his half of the cookie. And I think Kathy gave him the bigger half, didn't you, Kathy? So his moderation diet, he was talking about moderation this morning at the beginning of Sunday school. And we sit down, we had a whole conversation about moderation last night. But soberly is one with self-restraint. In other words, being able to deny yourself to live for God. Righteously means in relation to our neighbor. Or justly. Think about that this morning. Who's our neighbor? Each and every one of us that's here at the house of God. Godly. In relation to God. Not just something higher, but godly with love and reverence toward God. A thankful attitude toward God for His grace of salvation. Thirdly, this morning, I want us to deal with the grace of God and salvation. This gift involves Christ Himself. See, preacher, how do you get that? Verse number 14, who gave Himself for us that he might redeem us from all what? Iniquity. And purify unto himself a what? Peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. When I think about it involving Christ himself, number one, he came to redeem us from every lawless deed. That word redeem there means to liberate by payment of of ransom. From every lawless deed, the condition of without law because of ignorance or because of violating it, contempt and violation of law, iniquity and wickedness. When I think about that today, I think about the law that was put in the Old Testament. If that law was still true today, how many of us would be dead without Christ? A lot of us, right? How many of us would be missing fingers for accidentally stealing the pen from the bank? Now, we've all done that, right? The other day I was on a job site, and I have a uh, certificate of completion. I have some nice ink pens, those Pilot Black Gel Pens .07. If you ever want to buy me some pens, you know what kind to get now. And, <laughs> and they're really nice. And I was on this job, and I had this man sign off that we was done. And I got back to the truck, and I reached in my pocket for that pen. I said, that rascal stole my ink pen. And we're all guilty of it. He didn't mean to. I don't think he did. I didn't assume he did. And I I began to think about, man, if we was under the law, that man would lose his finger over that. If it's the second or third pen, he may lose all of his fingers in his hand over that. Right? The grace of God brought us away from the law. We're no longer under the law, but we're under grace. He came to, Jesus died to liberate us from the guilt of lawlessness by his precious blood. And I'm grateful for that today. Not only that, but he came to purify us for every good work. That pure word purify right there means to make clean, to purify from wickedness. When I think about that today, Our heart that once was black with sin is now as white as snow. I think about that song, What Can Wash Away My Sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Though my sin be as scarlet, it shall be as wool. For every good work, works that are beautiful, excellent, eminent, choice, surpassing, precious, useful, suitable, commendable, and admirable. What does your work for God look like today? The work that he's done for us. He said, I've come to perform a good work into you and I will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Is that what your Bible says? The good work that he's given us. Lastly, this morning, he calls us to be his special people. Verse number 15 or verse number 14. And purify in himself a peculiar people. This morning, that word peculiar right there, people have misinterpreted that throughout the years. That word peculiar right there does not mean to be weird, like some people want you to believe it does. It doesn't mean that, and I know offense, doesn't mean you have to dress like the Amish, and doesn't mean you have to wear head coverings and all that mess. 
But what it means is you are a special person in the eyes of God. You are one of God's children, and that makes you peculiar. This world will never understand the love of God, the grace of God, and that makes you different from this world. This world cannot say no to temptation. This world cannot say no to sin. This world cannot say no to immorality. But us that are saved, we're peculiar people because we have the Holy Ghost inside of us to say no. Zealous there means eager, ing, uh, means to be eager, desiring of something. Each one of us to desire to know more about Christ. When I think about this this morning, and I'm done. This morning when we think about God. And we think about it involving himself. Lastly, the Bible says that we're looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing. When we were lost and undone without God, we could care less if God came back or not. We could care less if our lives were pleasing to God. And now you and I are waiting on the Lord to return. You and I are sitting back and we're looking for his return. Because when we know when he returns, he's going to take us out of this world of sin, out of this world of sickness, out of this world of sorrow. He's already, del he's already delivered us from the penalty of sin. But he's going to deliver us from the presence of sin. And that's why you and I look for that blessed hope. So I'll stand at our feet this morning as Miss Janet comes, as Brother Ted comes this morning. Brother Ted, you don't have to come. We'll just play something softly, Miss Janet, if you want to.